Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today I have another keyboard for you and this one is unique and that's one of the reasons why I agreed uh, to review it on the channel and that is because this is a non-mechanical switch keyboard it is a magnetic switch keyboard so the long and the short of it is Drunk Deer is a company that makes this keyboard so far and their claim to fame is it uses a magnetic hall sensor switch. What this means is that you can essentially adjust where in the key press the actuation occurs. And there's a whole bunch of other technological advantages. And I'm really curious to know, does it actually produce any significant advantages when it's compared against, say, a more uh, traditional uh, mechanical switch? The company did send out this sample for me to review, so in full transparency and disclosure, Drunk Deer did send this unit to me for testing and the production of this video. I did not personally purchase it, however my opinions about this device will remain 100% my own. A couple other things to note is that this is a keyboard that comes in either black or white, and it is wired only. It features a 75% layout and the adjustable switch means that you have nine different levels of actuation distance from 0.4 millimeters, which is pretty darn sensitive, to 3.6, so pretty much bottoming out uh, the key nearly in comparison. There's also a two-in-one action, which means that there can be two different, um, essentially, key presses recognized at two different distances, which I'm keen to see what practical applications that might have. There's also a piece of software that you can use to customize the keyboard, uh, all the actuations, uh, the RGB backlight, all that good stuff. The only thing that I'll mention is that it is currently PC only. So you can program this and then plug it into your Mac, but just be aware that you'll need a PC to program it. Let's open it up and see what we get on the inside. All right, inside we have a quick guide. Uh, please do not place the keyboard in a high temperature or strong magnetic environment. That makes sense. Magnets will respond very funny to those two things. And we have uh, some instructions on how to adjust the actuation point of all the keys, how to change the backlight color. Now this is for certain effects only. Obviously the software is gonna give you a lot more uh, different pre-programmed backlighting effects, how to switch it from a Mac OS layout to a Windows layout, and it gives you a warning about the programming and all that other good stuff. Up here we have some keycaps, which I'm guessing are my Windows keycaps because it looks like my Mac ones have been installed already from the factory. And then in the little baggie here, I'm expecting to see perhaps a key puller and a USB cable. And it does not disappoint. So we have a USB Type-C to USB Type-C with a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter. We have our key puller, or key cap puller, I should say. And then we have the keyboard itself. And we have a little user manual which goes over the package contents, plugging it in, how to restore the keyboard to factory settings, and it gives you some information about how to adjust the sensitivity, a little bit of history on the magnetic switch, which is pretty cool, how to change the backlight effects, key layouts, um, some information on your volume knob. I mean, the keyboard's currently turned off. There is a lot of plastic, so uh, the exterior is all plastic. It's pretty lightweight, um, but at a price point of about $150 uh, maximum, you can get these on sale for about $120 or $129. I'm not expecting amazing things because you're paying for the hall sensors. <laughs>
All right, let's get these Mac keycaps off. So initial impressions is it feels like any linear that I've um, ever typed on. It feels slightly stiffer than some. So if I go over here, might be on a little bit of heavier side of a red, very hard to tell. The uh, space bar definitely has a bit of twang to it when it's hit, um, but that's not surprising uh, given the construction of uh, the keyboard itself. I'm going to go ahead and test this thing out for a little bit, and then I'll bring back the results uh, in the second part of this video. All right, so I've had the chance to test this keyboard for a couple of days, and here are some initial conclusions. The whole thing is plastic and it does feel pretty lightweight. I think there might be a plate in the middle there just to kind of help with the sound. Uh, but overall, you know, you're going to pick this up and be potentially underwhelmed at first glance. And again, that's because the money is going into the switches more than anywhere else. And I'm, I'm actually on board with that. So on the bottom, we do have adjustable feet. So if you don't like the angle, you can flip those up, but you've only got the one position. Um, but the one thing that I do have to admit is that there is something uh, to these uh, hall switches. So on average, I can usually get up into the 70 words uh, per minute without really any difficulty on most keyboards. Uh, there are some, though, that I have to kind of train myself up to to get to that 70. The very first time I did a typing test with this thing, I was able to get about 73 to 74 words per minute consistently. And that is because rather than me training myself to the keyboard, I was able to adjust the sensitivity of the switch to essentially train the keyboard to me, which is a really neat idea. And if you, for whatever reason, had a workstation where you had multiple people using uh, the same keyboard, but they're like, ah, oh, I don't like the sensitivity of that, then it's just a matter of going up and be like, ah, oh, I know I do three, so I hit that. I found four personally to be the sweet spot. I found one pretty sensitive, and then I found nine is pretty much like bottoming out the keys, which I don't necessarily do on my regular uh, keyboard. So uh, let's just talk a little bit about the audio experience. So I'm gonna take my lapel microphone off here and put it next to the keys so you can hear the keystrokes.
So I would describe it as having a bit of an echo and a twang to it. Um, but again, that's probably just because what the case is actually made out of. Uh, but overall, not offensive to the ears at all. So the next thing I'll do is a quick typing test here on camera. Like I said, I was able to get about 73, 70 words or 74 words per minute. Seventy one words per minute without any uh, issue there. But again, I'm consistently doing over 70 and I haven't spent a whole lot of time uh, with this keyboard. And it is good to see um, that this thing is actually very configurable. You do have some uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, to help with that. But you also have a very comprehensive uh, piece of software that also supports uh, firmware updates. Uh, in fact, it's telling me right now that this does have a firmware update that it does need to do uh, for the IC. So one of the neat things about the software is you can really get an understanding for um, the keystroke. So if we tar uh, tell it to start tracking, we can actually see the actuation point where it's set on four and how far I have to press the key down to actually uh, get it to work. So it's one of those things where if you want to just hit a key to see about on average how hard you strike, that's really, really cool. The other thing, of course, you can do is add a secondary sensitivity. Now, what that secondary uh, sensitivity does is it helps uh, assign an additional key press for that key. So a light touch might be one thing, but then a full bottom out might uh, elicit a different result. And there's probably lots of you out there that can think of great reasons that you would want that functionality, um, especially if you're doing some complex macros and some games. I'm not 100% sure uh, what exact function I would like that to have, but that is uh, something that is still pretty slick. And you can adjust uh, the color of your keys uh, in software, no problem which is very handy. You can program the macros. You can have different profiles. There's an awful lot in the software kit to like. Uh, and of course, the software kit is proprietary, so you just got to be aware of that. So this keyboard takes things in a different direction where if you're not super excited about necessarily keyboard sound, but keyboard technology, I think this is uh, pretty slick. Uh, the switches are removable. Um, but for what reason, I'm not entirely sure, because you may or may not want to swap these to another keyboard. Your mileage may vary, uh, just based on the technology behind them. This is slick. I think that there are going to be people out there that are really going to enjoy the super customizability of these hall switches, the fact that you can have uh, two layers of them. You've got a really easy to use uh, software kit, regrettably only on operating under Windows right now, but you can still program uh, the keyboard in the software and then unplug it and then use it in another device and you should be fine. A few things about the design of the keyboard that I wish were different just for me. They are nitpicks. There is no secondary windows or super key over on the right hand side, probably due to the additional function key. Um, there is no print screen uh, button immediately here. I could obviously program one in the software to completely alleviate that. Uh, but I don't have any extra keycaps to swap that out, so I would need to remember that uh, I would need to do that. So I think the only way you could really get around that is if they included extra keycaps in the box for some of the other settings. So that way, if you wanted to reprogram 
the home page up and page down in end keys, um, you could just pop those keys off, reprogram them in the software, and then put the key cap on. So that would be the only thing that I could think of to really improve. So if you don't want these, you could swap them out to something else. Overall though, really think that this is cool. Uh, I think it's something that's really different, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to feature it on the channel. And if you have any questions about it, make sure you're leaving them in the comments section down below. I'll leave some links on where you can buy one of these if you want one for yourself. I'm going to thank Drunk Deer for sending this to me. I think it's, again, really cool, this whole idea of a completely different switch technology. And it does have some real benefits. It's not just a gimmick. And if you enjoy this sort of content and want to see more, I'm going to leave uh, some YouTube links over here and some playlists up on the screen. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.